All right, let's call the meeting to order. It's 1.30, the lights are on. It must be time to start. Uh, first item that I've got, second item that I've got is to receive the minutes. Did everybody look at those? Yes. Do I have a motion? I'd like to mo uh, motion that we receive the minutes of the March 7th, 2024 meeting. Second. Cast votes. I voted yay. It's not showing up there. That's our problem. Is that video feed or? There is no problem. Okay. All right. Very good. Cindy, uh, continuance requests. We have none. Okay. Are there any applicants that want to ask for a continuance? Anybody else want a continuance? No consent docket, so let's get started. Cindy, if you call the first case, please. Um, item number one, case number 1555, a request of Gardner Studio on behalf of Wheeler District, LLC, for a variance to the yard regulation and landscaping for parking lot islands in the PUD 1611, located at 900 Hangar Drive. All right. Give us your name and address. Tell us about the application, please. Yes, so my name is Sarah Hanna. I'm here on behalf of Gardner Studio. Um, my address is 413 Northwest 46th Street. Okay. Um, I have this application in for a variance request. We previously presented to the Scenic River, um, uh, the Scenic River Overlay District and um, received approval from them, but they were requiring a variance for two conditions. Um, we've listed those in the application today. Um, one of those is for um, a variance that the first two floors of new construction have to be at or within 10 feet of the street right of way. Um, in this particular uh, lot, we are an irregular shape and with the current proposal of the building and our site constraints, um, we would have limited space between the pedestrian sidewalk and entry points into the building. Um, we are still maintaining these alignments on upper floors, but on the first floor, this becomes a challenge given the existing conditions. Um, and then the other variance that we're asking approval for is a requirement for the tree wells um, that the Scenic River Overlay District has. We are limited in site parking on this particular lot. And so um, to get as many parking spaces as we can, um, we are seeking to uh, reduce the required size of that tree well to a smaller uh, diamond footprint to allow for more parking spaces to be provided. Okay, questions, comments from the board? There are no protests on this one. Does anybody want to speak on this application? The only thing I would ask is that you are going to meet the landscaping requirements yes. still without the large island. Yes, right? yes, definitely. Um, we exceed the points required for this lot um, in other areas of the development as well. Okay. Anything else? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chair. Um, make a motion to approve case number 15555 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special or for a variance. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Cast your votes. They're doing it for us. All right, you're approved. Do you have the next one? I have the next one. So okay. That's okay. <laughs> Item number two, case number 15556, five, a request of Gardner Studio on behalf of Wheeler District LLC for a variance to the yard regulations and landscaping for parking lot islands located at 901 Hangar Drive. 
Yes, so this is um, the lot directly north of the one we just looked at. We're asking for the same variances for this lot. Our um, setback requirement and the restrictions that we described in the first application are very similar on this one given the lot constraints that we're dealing with. Okay. Anything from the board? Nobody signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address the board on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. With that, I'll make a motion to approve case number 15556 on the basis that it meets the requirement for a variance. Second. Motion and a second. Cash to votes. approved. Thank you. Item number three, case number 15560 is a request of Johnson Associates on behalf of Taylor Built Homes and TD Investments and Cordelia Ranch Replat for a variance to minimum lot width and setback requirements in the RA district located um, at the following addresses 9409, 9417 Northeast 141st Street, 14132 14000 Birch Lane and 9040, 9416, 9408, 9400 Northeast 139th Street and 14025 and 14033 Magnolia Lane. Good afternoon, Mark Zitzow with Johnson & Associates on behalf of the applicant. Uh, if you could please place the plat up on the screen. Uh, this is a bit of a unique application, and Commissioner Noble may remember the, the tail end of this, but this started probably seven years ago. Uh, this property was owned in a PUD. It was then rezoned RA2, and then it was rezoned again. Ultimately, the market determined that larger two-plus-acre lots in this part of town uh, was not meeting the need, and so it continued to get rezoned into smaller lots. The streets had been built. Uh, which made this property unique. It had ended up kind of in a foreclosure situation. Ultimately, our client bought it, we rezoned it, uh, and then platted it to uh, the layout that you see on the screen. We were restricted in the layout because of where the streets had already been built. Our client acquired it mid-development, which is a, a bit unique. Ultimately, we went through the process. It was approved by uh, planning commission, been recommended, recommended uh, to be approved by staff. And then the plat was recorded, as you see it on the screen. Uh, the oddity here was some of the lots didn't meet the minimum lot width or the building line because of the elbow. Uh, typically, the lot uh, width is narrower on the elbow in cul-de-sac lots. The building line wasn't placed in the correct spot. Uh, and it, it wasn't caught as we went through the process. So the lots in blue uh, didn't meet the minimum lot width requirement, and the lots in green didn't meet the setback requirement. So what we're asking for is a remedy to allow for these uh, lots and building permits to proceed. You can actually see that the lot on the uh, southwest corner or the bottom left corner of the exhibit actually has a home on it. It wasn't caught. And so I think as staff has changed out in plan review, some things are, are being caught that, that weren't previously. So uh, what we're asking for is uh, your approval today to allow these lots uh, to be buildable as approved by the Planning Commission on the recorded plat. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Questions or comments from the board? Well, mostly the, the reasoning for having to do that is they're skinny in the front, and so that you have to push the house further back Correct. from the build line and, and just to make it buildable. But they're all larger lots already. They're almost all one acre or Correct. close to. So. We meet the minimum lot size um, requirements. Uh, and so th these ones on the corner, the house is just going to sit further back. But because it was a platted building line, we couldn't just administratively amend it, and that's why we're here. And I went, I went to the neighborhood. It, it looks fine. I mean, right. yeah. No, ultimately, it's not from the from from the perspective of the people that live there, they're buying into exactly what they thought. It was just these two requirements weren't met on a handful of the lots. 
<clears throat> so in regards to the folks that are already living there, there's no established HOA, no control has been turned over to the neighbors. It's still being led by the developer? That's correct. Okay, and so you're not aware of anybody having any pushback in regards to these variances? No, sir. Okay. And the, the green one, actually, there, there's a house on it, and the 300 foot there would have captured the folks that were living in the neighborhood, too. And So to my knowledge, we haven't received any letters. I don't believe anyone is here today on it. Anything else? else? Nobody signed up to speak, so anybody wants to address the board on this application? All right, ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve case number 15560 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a variance. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Thank you all. Item number four, case number 15558, I'm sorry, 1558, request of Ali Jabari for a variance to yard and bulk regulations concerning the rear yard setback in the I-1 Light Industrial District located at 625 Southwest 29th Street. Okay, okay give us your name and address and tell us about your application, please. My name is Charles Boddicker, I'm an architect. Uh, address is 16112 Cantera Creek Drive in Edmond. And uh, long story short, we have a carport building. It's a metal structure. I think there's pictures. Oh, yeah. uh, it's within the 15-foot uh, setback that we need because we have two different zones, uh, R on, on the north, and then ours is an I zone. So we thought, uh, as opposed to potentially moving the building, which is the hardship at this point, um, that we would ask you all uh, and see if the neighbors had any issues and just kind of make our case uh, to allow the building to remain where it is. <coughs> and then of course, this is the tail end of a permit. So pending your approval, uh, I think we'll have everything else in a row and then we can get this inspected and closed out. Okay. And any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay. Anything from the board? Is, is there a utility easement underneath the building, do you know? No, there isn't. None that I'm aware of, at least. And the building's sitting about five feet off the fence? It's about five feet off the fence. Uh, the biggest concern that we had, uh, aside from any you know, neighbors, um, was just making sure that we got the water off uh, and onto the lot. So that's something that uh, we'll be doing. The, the storm drainage? Yes, sir. Have you made contact with the people to the to the north? Um, my, I'm speaking on behalf of my client, obviously, and he is here. Um, but my understanding, he's attempted to talk to the neighbors, you know, in direct, and he has told me that there have not been any issues as far as this goes. Again, that he or I am aware of. <laughs> you know, I know there's a couple of other properties. Excuse me, to the to the east that. Also That's a very buildings. congested area, for sure. Approaching. Okay. Anything else from the board? Nobody signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address us on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. I like the motion. Sorry. I like the motion that we approve case number 155 eight on the ground said it meets the requirements for a variance. Okay, got a motion and a second, cast your votes. You're approved. Thank you so much. Item number five, case number 15559, request of Caitlin Turner of Williams Box Borshi on behalf of investors for Summers Development LLC in Summers Point Phase 7 for a variance to minimum lot size requirements located at 604, 608, 612 Caladium Drive and 13312, 13316, 13320, 13324. 13328 and 13329 Southwest 5th Street. Good afternoon, Caitlin Turner, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant. So a little 
brief history on this on these lots. It did go through the plotting process through Oklahoma City. It was approved uh, after they began development, and many of the lots have already been developed and sold. It was brought to their attention that a few of these lots that are specified in the board of, or in the variance application, excuse me, fall just under that 6,000 square foot uh, required lot size for R1. So this is to clean that up, allow for these lots to remain in conformance with the plot. Again, that was approved. Uh, the largest variance that we're seeking is a little over 800 square feet. The smallest one is 0 .02 inches. So this is just cleaning them all up in one application so that they can continue to uh, sell the lots and not have any issue moving forward. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Did you see that this was platted this way? Yes. And so the plat was gone through the process and approved with yes. being under the 6,000 square foot minimum? Yes. I will say planning commission doesn't actually get to see the exact number on each one of them. So right, yeah. It's, it's kind of up I to the engineering, right? I think it kind of slipped right? by without, it's between planning commission and council where that is reviewed and determined. Okay, got it. So I, I was just reading in the, in the application, it, it says that the minimum lot size application in, in this application is 5,189 square feet. Mm -hmm. And then the next sentence, it says that the maximum lot size within this application is 5,999 square feet. Right. So the lots that we're needing to get a variance for, the smallest lot size is requiring that 800 yeah, square foot variance, whereas the largest lot that is also needing a variance is 5,999.98 okay. square feet. So that's, that was that. Yeah. And I, I went by there. I mean, these are really pretty small houses on very small lots, and you couldn't really see any difference. So I was wondering right. if it's even in the depth of the lot, maybe, but the width. I think they're all they all meet the setbacks. Correct. And and so. Yeah, this is the only only variance needed. Yeah. It meets all other R1 requirements. I'm fine with this. I'm I'm just curious on the requirement to have a variance if it was platted this way. Is that? But maybe council can answer, can like, if it was platted yeah. like this, is a variance necessary? Sarah's will answer that for you. Sarah Welch, Planning Department. Um, just to clarify, when Planning Commission approved the final plat, it met the minimum lot size. Between Planning Commission and City Council, there was a, a shift in some of the lot lines. Um, and it was accepted with some lots being smaller than the minimum lot size requirement. Um, so what you're, what you're being asked to um, approve is the lots that are less than 6,000 square feet um, to grant a variance on each of those lots so that they're not carried with the burden of um, a lot size that doesn't conform to the zoning district. But they weren't, so this configuration didn't exist when it went through planning commission. It was very, very close. It's just that some of the lot lines shifted and when they did that, some of the lots became smaller than 6,000 square feet which is where this issue that we're trying to resolve today is happening. Okay. So when you say some of the lots, is that a small number? Uh, there are nine total. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's small. Yeah. And they're all kind of, if you can see the yeah. screen, they're all kind of right around each other. And the houses all look uniform. They all have five foot setbacks on side yards and so in looking at it it didn't you couldn't see any, anything that was off and I'm assuming the MDS everything all the other supporting documentation showed that the intent was to have 6,000 square feet it wasn't anywhere else in the application that they were supposed to be smaller correct correct it was just <coughs> R1 it was just straight R1 okay I got you okay. anything else nobody signed up this. to speak on this one Anybody want to address the board on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion then. I'll make a motion to approve case number 15559 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a variance. Second. Motion and second, cast your votes. Thank you. You're approved.
Case number 15557 is a request of the Mitchells for a variance to front yard plat building line in the R1 single family residential district located at 947 East Hill Street. Hi, um, my name is Lucretia Mitchell. This is my husband, Sunshine Mitchell, and the address is 947 East Hill Street. Um, good afternoon, and forgive me, I'm new to this, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of read a few things. Um, my husband and I are the owners of EMC2 Investments, and we actually acquired this lot through a legal real, real estate transaction. On December the 28th, uh, we found out that there was a building violation through the Chicago Title Edmund, um, and we decided to go ahead and just get a land surveyor um, to kind of just take a look at everything, um, and we found out that there was an encroachment. And so um, we ended up going under contract on January 18th with this property of this year and was supposed to close uh, February 29th, but unfortunately we could not because Chicago Title, just based off of their underwriters, needed the uh, variance to be passed in order for us to actually close. And so we had to extend that to uh, March 29th. Um, in order to close and they need some type of documentation for us to be able to do that. Um, we passed all of the, the inspections that we needed to, um, had it approved by the city. They came out, looked at footings, all of that, um, but still were in the situation. We did hire a builder to, um, to actually do the work for us. And so, unfortunately, we're in this situation now. Um, and so we are asking that we get the approval to be able to close on this home, um, hopefully next week. Um, if not financially, it would probably be catastrophic for us. So that's it. Yeah, I'm a, a little bit aware of situations in this area. Um, I just want to clarify, you guys didn't, you guys hired the builder, this was all done through the builder, so it was an oversight on that part right. as far as, yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate, and it's an, it's an easy, it's something that should have easily been caught, mm -hmm. in my opinion, but I completely understand uh, the situation you guys are in. And at the same time, all of the other properties that are along there are already all built out to the same line as you are, so the, the houses all line up. Correct, and we're actually, there's like two lots on one side of us and then another yeah. on, on that's one. That's what I figured. Yeah. Th those people are all going to have to get variances too, and or else right. nothing's going to line up. <laughs> right. And so... Yeah, I, I don't have any problem with it. This is the easy one. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fine with this. Anybody want to speak on this one? Nobody signed up. Okay, we're ready for a motion then. I like to motion that we approve case number one five 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 seven for a variance on the grounds that it meets the requirements of statutory variance. Second. Motion and a second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Good Thank luck. you. And is it something that we have to wait on to get, I'm sorry if I'm out of order, but do we have to wait on something if we're supposed to close next week, like something to get approved or paperwork? Well, there's always a 10 day appeal time, but the approval will be in the permit portal and they can always inquire that it's been approved and you'll get a board order after the 10 days. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Item number seven, case number 15535 is an application for special exception of Joyce Willis to allow home sharing located at 2833 Northwest 12th Street. Hello, I'm Joyce Willis and I'm here representing Heartland Living LLC um, to request uh, to allow lodging accommodations for my home sharing property. Anything from the board? Um, I, I'd like to just clarify a couple things on the application. Uh, it's a two bedroom, one bath home. That's yes. Two, and you have uh, a maximum of five guests. Yes. So in a two bedroom, how, how, how can you get to five? Uh, we have like a roll away if they need extra or a couch type of situation to allow for an extra person. 
Okay, would you be willing to just do a four? Sure. Just two for two bedroom. And then, I see you have quiet hours, 10 to 8 a.m. And I would like to limit the number of cars. I'm sorry? I would like to limit, limit. the number of cars right. to three. Three? With a maximum of one car parked in the street. Yeah, there's usually not that many. Usually one, maybe yep. two. Yep. Just to protect the neighbors. This is the first time this application, I believe, is the first time of a renewal. Yes, I've had, uh, I have another one that's right beside it, but I started it back in 2018, so I guess it was grandfathered in. And this one I just began in like the end of 21. Okay, and because it's the first time, a one year exception. Okay. I don't have any protests on this one or anybody signed up. Mr. Noble, did you say three cars? Three total? cars, three cars total, one off on the street, maximum. So four total? Three. Oh, three total. Two in the drive, okay. one in the street. Okay. Anything else? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15535 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-opposed rules and changes to the application to a maximum of four guests, a maximum of three cars with one on-street on parking and for a one-year exception. Second. Okay, a motion and a second, cast your votes. You're approved. Thank you. Item number eight, case number 15539 is a renewal application of Scott and Ka Caitlin Archer to allow home sharing at 4904 Larissa Lane. Uh, Kevin Mears, 2608. Sorry. Go ahead. 2608 Northwest 69th Street. I represent Caitlin and Scott. Um, we've had this property for, for a few years now. Um, it's been fantastic. Um, we, we limit parking, we limit occupancy. Um, we take all the precautions we possibly can and we have not had any issue. So I'm just asking for a renewal of the license. Okay. Anything from the board? Is there anyone here? Uh, not. On this one, there was a protest in the packet, I think. Did you get that protest? I did. Okay. Have you reached out to them? We have. It, it, it's a neighbor across the street, and nothing we can possibly do would ever change her opinion. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yep. No code violations in the last year? No police calls, no code violations, no parking violations, nothing. Anything else from the board? I think it's a three bedroom home. Yes. You're asking for eight guests. So in one bedroom, we have a trundle type bed. So we limit it to eight guests, but we've actually taken out that. So now it's actually seven guests. Um, and we sit, we have no off, um, on street parking. It's all in the garage, in the driveway. Um, we've never had an issue. We've got a camera there. We monitor everything. We've never had a problem. Okay, so you'd be willing to make the adjustment to the application for seven guests? Yes, sir. And then I would also like to, to add into the application about the cars, just the number of cars. Yes, sir. And our, our check-in message has all the details, like no parking on the street, only in the driveway, only in the garage, that kind of stuff. So we're, we're trying to be proactive. How many cars can you fit in the driveway? Four. And a three-year exemption. I, I I would like that. Yes. Okay. Anybody signed? Up? Nobody signed up on this one. Is there anybody who wants to address the board on this application? Okay. I think we're ready for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve case number one five five three nine on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and adjustments to 
the application to a maximum of seven guests and a maximum of four cars and no on-street parking. And for a period of three years. Second. A motion and a second, cast your votes. You're approved. Thank you. On that last item, who made the second? I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. We have item number nine, case number 15545 is a renewal application for Greenway Homes to allow home sharing at 2612 Northwest 49th Street. So I'm gonna have one, I'm sorry, 545, 546, 547, 548, and 549. I'm Jana Copps, I'm the property manager for all of these locations. Okay. I'm here to represent Greenway Homes and Huntley Co-Holdings. Okay, tell us about the application, and it appears as though there have been some code violations. I'm sorry? The first, this, on this application, there was a code violation for the trash and the cans being, being out. Oh, the trash cans being out. They, we have remedied that. It's been, we have a guy who picks it up every Tuesday. He, uh, they put it out, cleaners put it out, and he picks it up every Tuesday. So I don't know when that last code violation was, but it shouldn't be within the last, gosh, five, six months. Okay. Anything yeah. else from the board? Um, just a couple of, of things for the application to change them. Um, I'd like to, the quiet hours were open, okay. 9.30 p.m. to, it didn't say when, so I'd like to change that to 9.30 p.m. to 8 a.m. on the quiet hours. It is our, yeah, that is. Yep. Sorry, that's not in there, but it is, that is correct. Eight and, to nine. And then I'd like to limit the number of cars in the parking lot, or in the driveway. You, so, you kind of have that dictated out. I just don't want any cars on the street. So at that location, two cars can fit in that smaller driveway. Then there's another driveway on the other side. Uh -huh. So I don't know what are you wanting to limit it to. How many cars can fit in the driveway? One, two, three, three, four. three four, five, six. Oh, that's too many. If you want to go that high. <laughs> So would you be comfortable with four car maximum? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. And this is a renewal and a renew the first renewal, I, I'd like to see a three year exemption. Okay. okay. Anything else from the board? Anybody want to address us on this application? Nobody signed up for this one. Thanks. I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15545 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-opposed rules and the adjustment to quiet hours from 9.30 to 8 a.m., a maximum of four cars with no on-street parking and for a three-year term. Second. In a second, cast your votes. You're approved. Awesome. Item number 10, case number 15546, a renewal application of Huntley Co uh, Company Holdings to allow home sharing at 2708 Northwest Old. On this one, we just found out that we had several code violations for the trash can as well. Um, when we went to renew our application, they mentioned we had never received any formal notice or anything like that. Um, we did have a guy who was going and taking it um, um, Tuesdays but pickup is on Thursdays. So that has been the remedy. It's now on his radar to pick up on Thursdays instead of Thursdays. Anything from the board? Um, just a couple of other things. And, and I do appreciate that the owners have a, a property manager. I think having a property manager on these will take care of those problems and, and help the neighbors feel more comfortable with, with the situation. Um, just a couple of other things. Same, same. It's, the, the quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. and a maximum number of cars being three and no on-street parking. Okay. And the same with three-year exception. Sounds good to me. Okay. Anything else from the board? Nobody signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address the board on this application? 
think we're ready for a motion. Matt, I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15546 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and the addition of quiet, time, quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., a maximum of three cars and no on-street parking, and a three-year exception. Second. Okay, motion in a second, Cash the Boots. And you're approved. Thank you. Item number 11, case number 15547, a renewal application of Huntley Company Holdings to allow home sharing at 6601 North Ross Avenue. We shouldn't have anything on this one. <laughs> um, you've gotten the application, quiet time is after 9 a.m. I'm okay with that. But did you mean 9 p.m.? Yes. And same on, on this one, just to uh, make, make adjustments to the application, the quiet hours to be 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., a maximum number of cars being three, with one allowed to be on street, okay. because the driveway's not very big, and a three-year exception. Sounds good to me. A second. Okay, motion and a second, cast your vote. Well, I haven't made a, I made a motion, sorry. It oh, like I thought I heard a motion. Yeah. 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 Well, so. I can't make a motion, so you go ahead. Sean. Yeah. Um, make a motion to approve case number 15547 on the basis that it meets the statutory <laughs> requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and adjustments to the application of quiet hours between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m a maximum of three cars with one car allowed on street for a term of three, three years. A second. Okay, now we have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. Approved. Okay. Item number 12, case number 15548 is a renewal application of Huntley Holdings to allow home sharing located at 2841 Cambridge. We also shouldn't have anything on this one. Well, there's, a, there's a protest on this one? Yeah, that, there's a written protest in our yeah. packet. On, you received a, I've only received one protest and that was for 2744 Lancaster. No, you, you, yeah, Cindy, I'll have a copy. What is in the packet? And, and I'm just going to chime in really quickly on this one that um, it's not uncommon to have some protests on some of these home shares. And a lot of the reasons cited even in this particular uh, protest letter uh, are things that I, I, I can't really consider in my decision. However, uh, whenever a protester does take the time to document an experience that they've had, in this case, they've shown uh, an abundance of cars impeding, you know, uh, traffic and walkability and so I will say on this one I'm only looking to renew it for a year until we can see that uh, the property can uh, be managed in a way that we're not we're not seeing this type of uh, negative experience and then you know, three year afterwards so I'm looking at this Stephanie Palm Green and I see where she says 2841 but this picture it says during Memorial weekend at 2720 Lancaster Lane notes a different address other than the one that's right there so this is not this is not you all's property that's in the photo so 2744 Lancaster could be potentially in this one but this 2841 Cambridge Court like are these two together like these pictures are together yeah I, I think they probably because like if you look at line. this it says on this one it's 27 Anyway, yeah. 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 This is probably not this. I was going to question that too because it's two different addresses. Yeah, if that's not the property, then I don't want to hold you all responsible for activity taking place somewhere <laughs> else. So if that doesn't 
Well, I, I will take responsibility for 2744 Lancaster if that is a picture from 2720 Lancaster. Um, I don't, like, I, I could look back at my camera from Memorial Day weekend and see if that actually correlates with so, us. But so when we get to that case, we'll, we'll read. Okay, your, yeah, but I don't know about the 2841 yeah. so portion Yeah, this of one's that. the 2841 Cambridge Court. And so you, you do have the, the uh, protest from Stephanie. Right. So are those, yeah. I, I believe that's right, because that's, the address is, is stated in the, in the protest. But if you look at the picture, it's the Yeah, I think the picture probably doesn't belong with the, with the written. So is her protest against this house that we're currently discussing? Yes, I believe the so. The 2840 like, yeah. yeah. But not the picture. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I handed that paper back to her, so I'm not sure, what did she protest? General concerns against yeah. home sharing mostly. Yeah. And I think we, we do a good job of taking care of most of those with adjustments to the applications, if, if any. Well, members, I have it in the file that way. I can't verify, of course, right now, but. Uh, perhaps she went to protest another case and just, I don't know. So on this property, we do, on 2841 Cambridge, we do limit it to three cars, which is two cars in the driveway and one outside the street. Um, yep. Because it only holds a max of six people, so there shouldn't be anything. And like I said, I can go back and look at the cameras, but... We're we didn't have any verbal acknowledgement from her regarding yep. that for that weekend. Okay, and you have her contact with, with that with that written document if you wanted to reach out with, to her, that, that's fine. Um, as far as the application, the same things I'd like to make is an adjustment to the quiet hours being 9.30 p.m. to 8 a.m. Keep it at a maximum of three cars with one car on street. and. I'd be good with a three-year exemption. So may I ask the question, please? Because according to what um, the complaint states that the driveway, this is a smaller home, has a single car driveway. Mm -hmm. So you can put, can you still you get can put three? two, just two, two, and then one on street. Okay, thank you. Correct. Okay. And nobody signed up to speak on this one. Is there anybody who wants to address the board on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. With that, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15548 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and adjustments to them of quiet hours being 9.30 p.m. to 8 a.m., a three-car maximum with one car on street parking, and a three-year exception term. Second. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Cast your vote. And you're approved. Item number 13, case number 15549 is a renewal application of Huntley Company about home sharing located at 57 Lancaster. Not the same house. Yeah, but What were the code violations? Was it trash again? Again, that's been remedied. We have a gentleman who picks up on two. Okay. Anything else from the board? Um, and same thing on this application, just make an adjustment to the quiet, quiet hours of 9 p.m. to 8 a.m and a maximum of three cars and no on-street parking. I think you can get all three cars in the driveway. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, that should work. And a three-year term.
Um, Sounds good to me. Um, well, there's two written protests. And yeah, nobody signed up to speak. Pardon? Yeah. Did you get those, the, the written protests? I have one. Okay, and then this there's morning an, we got that other one. Got another one. Oh, the one that... And I am fine with addressing everything on this. Yeah, and again, a lot of times it's the cars that are parked all over, and that's why I try to limit mm -hmm. the number of cars. I got that. So three can park. Um, we do. Ha we did have a max of four on there, so we did ask the people and in our details that go out for the welcome um, email, it does say three cars in the driveway, one in front of our property. Um, okay. So that's been changed to adjust for that. There has never been a car parked on a lawn in adjacent properties. Um, I have camera proof of that. The city police arrived three times in one day, and that was our poor new cleaner who didn't know that the doors automatically locked and left her purse, keys, phone, everything in the house, and she went back out to her car. Then she went to the sweet neighbor next door to ask for help who called the police on her. <laughs> so they came back once to check on her, make sure she was legit. They came back again to make sure she got back in and everything was okay. So as far as I know, it was just a two to visit yeah. and again it's your, your property management I don't know if your property management but had it during some of the instances but I just again reach out to them and he, make he, sure they have your contact it just makes it easier yes yes All right. and I think again answer a lot of questions with with the limited number of, of guests and the limited number of cars Uh, no one signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address the board on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15549 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and the addition of quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., a three-car maximum and no on-street parking and a three-year exception. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for your time. Mm -hmm. Item number 14, case number 15552, a renewal application of Luke Richardson of Triple H Investments to allow home sharing located at 1122 Northwest 27th. Hi, Luke Richardson, 5117 Isle Bridge Court, Edmond, Oklahoma. Here seeking a renewal for a three-year exception at 1122 Northwest 27th Street. Okay. Anything from the board on this one? Um, and this is a renewal, but you have six guests, but it's a two-bedroom, one-bath home. Correct. Pull out couch in the living room. Um, to get to six guests, I don't allow multiple families to come. I just limit it that they're going to have that many to one family. My wife and I, we have three kids, um, so just give them a place to sleep. But yeah, um, it is a duplex, so courtesy to my tenant, my long term tenant on the other side. Last thing I want is three couples there and yeah. getting calls from them because they're having fun at midnight. Anything else from the board? Um, I would like to limit the number of cars. It's, it's got a small driveway. Two car could probably fit. Okay. Yeah, and it then, can, it can then, hold three smaller but yeah, in the drive. What, but I'd allow two in the drive, and, and I'll allow one in the street. So three car maximum. Okay. And a three-year exemption. Is that okay? Yes. It's the first renewal. I remember you came, I think, maybe on my very first board meeting, but you, yep. there was some... Uh, protests on that so you yes that. on this one the neighbor yeah, yeah. the older neighbor there um, which <laughs> talked to them a couple weeks ago when I was repairing the fence and that's what his main concern was about the previous time was the fence issue which I resolved that myself and okay. uh, but yeah I haven't heard anything from him since okay. 
No one signed up to speak on this one. Does anybody want to address the board on this application? Okay, I think we're ready for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15552 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and the addition of a maximum number of cars being three, two on the drive and one on street parking for a three-year term. Second. Motion and a second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Item number 15, case number 15553, a renewal application investments to allow home sharing at 1111, I'm sorry, 1116 Northwest 43rd Street. And this is a three bedroom property, six guests. Um, driveway is almost 100 feet long. So, fell no street parking on this property and never had an issue with it. Um, and seeking a three year exception as well. Questions or comments from the board? The only thing I'd like to add is a maximum of four cars. I think you yeah. can probably get yeah, there. That's and and no on street parking. Okay, nobody signed up to speak on this one. Is there anybody who wants to address the board? Cassidy okay. from Helms Farm is usually here protesting. Yes, These, I do remember we have that. become very good friends. I support the uh, the neighborhood and have funded okay. their their block parties. So made friends. Good. That means you're obviously operating a good Airbnb and good business. Oh, so. That's good. Anyone here to speak on that? One? I think we're ready for a motion no. then. Uh, with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15553 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and the addition of a maximum of four cars, no on-street parking, and a term of three years. Second. No, no second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Thank you very much. Item number 16, case number 15554, an application of Aisha Mohammed and Saeed Mohammed to allow home sharing located at 113 Southwest 132nd Place. Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Sefuddin Khan Mohammed. I have applied for a home sharing. All right, tell us about your application, please. I'm sorry? Tell us about your application. Yes, we have started this uh, home sharing business so recently, and so we'd like to just get a home sharing permit for it, please. Yeah, we've got uh, two people signed up on this one. Okay, I'd like to hear from them. All right, uh, Nicole. There's some protesters, sure. so we're, we're gonna have them come up and speak. Nicole Armentor and I live at 109 Southwest 132nd place so I'm right next door and then haven't met him. <laughs> all I got was the letter in the mail and um, so a couple of things I would like to address um, is this I am going on my 19th year of owning this home and when we bought it um, it has always been a single family home residential area and you know, that's how everyone around me, the, all the neighbors around me, the one across the street was the original owners, the other ones, they've lived there about the same time as me or a little bit longer. And, and that's just always how it's been, is a, you, you think of it as a family, single dwelling home. I will say, um, a lot of the, the one on our street, there are a lot of children in that area. And so I'm going to come from the standpoint of two things. <laughs> I'm a mom. I'm also a teacher. A lot of my students live on that street, third graders. So I'll address that in one more second. And one of the main things is I was looking at, because I'm not familiar with the home sharing. So I've done lots of research. I have looked up so many things regarding it. Um, if it is what he stated just a second ago, his business, then everything that I look up in our HOA, we do not 
allow business activity through a home. Um, that is my first point. Um, if it is different people and no longer than 30 consecutive days, that's where I have a huge issue with safety. And I know there are lots of um, places where you can stay and, and you only want to be there for a week or two. My idea of that is typically when you're on vacation, you're near a beach or somewhere like that. This is smack dab in the middle of a residential neighborhood. Um, so going back to the safety, that is my huge concern. I have absolutely no clue who's going to be in there one week, who's going to be out, who's going to be in there for 30 days, who's going to be out. Here's where I go with the safety again. I would love to say, okay, are we prepared to do background searches on anybody that's coming in there and going to stay? I know lots of people would laugh at that and go, well, there's no way. Well, what about sex offender list? As I mentioned before, there are numerous children, not even just on that street, all throughout the neighborhood. And as a mom, yeah, I would want to know who's, I don't care if they're only being in there for a week. That's one week of me living next to complete strangers that I don't know, as opposed to my neighbors that have been there 15 years, 19 years, 20 years. And so that's, that is my biggest uh, stance where I'm coming from today. Um, some of the things, you look at Briarwood Creek, it is a single family home um, area. And I even went to look up last night and it says, um, <clears throat> some of the stuff that I came across was it says single family home is a home intended for one family to live in at a time. Most cases, this phrase is used to refer specifically to single family detached home, meaning freestanding, freestanding structures on their own. Then you go in to more and it says single family versus multi. Multi family homes are buildings that can house many different families at once, such as an apartment or a condo, duplex, triplex. And it goes on to that. Again, in my everything that I've known for the last 19 years this is a single family home residential area. Um, that's kind of where I stand on that. Um, I don't have a home that I've invested in for almost 19 years to live next to a motel. Or I was even, and this may sound outlandish, but a prison. Like, think about that. You have people you don't know coming in and out of that all the time. I'd probably be safer next to a prison because I would know there were cops there. I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, I've never had to go up against anything like this since I've lived there. So that's where I stand on that. <laughs> Thank you very much for okay. your time. Questions for her? Um, no, I'll wait to one more. Yeah, I got one more protester. Yep. Um, this one looks like Latoya Warren. Latoya. Did I say that right? There's an N, I just don't, I write poorly. Okay, Hi. Ms. Um, Warren. Yes, uh, my name is Latonya Warren. I live at 13120 Boxwood Court, which is within this neighborhood. As of February, I was elected as our HOA president, and I have received several emails actually about this. Um, Nicole was one of them, but there was a couple other. Um, according to our HOA rules, which I do have in front of me, I'm not sure if you guys got a copy of it or not, um, but it, we do have in our bylaws here, um, item number 15 is non-residential use. No churches, business, trade, home, occupation, or any other activity shall be carried on upon any residential lot. No noxious or offensive activity shall be carried on upon any lot, nor shall anything be done therein which may be or may become an annoyance or nuisance to the neighborhood. Um, this was written by um, P.D. Odom when they started the the area, and that's something, because we were actually discussing our new bylaws, so that's something that we still wish to carry on. Like Nicole said, th there's a lot of kids that do play in the neighborhood, um, and it is a it is a tighter-knit neighborhood, and the neighbors do try to patrol things that they see, and we do report things, um, and we just want to maintain the safetyness of our neighborhood. And I've only lived there, and I'm relatively new to our neighborhood as well, um, and I've grown to love it in the last two years that I've lived there. Anything from the board? So, I believe this is in Ward 4, right? 
it, this is in Ward 4, the City of Oklahoma City? Yes. And I, I would encourage you to reach out to your council person. They are working on adjustments to the uh, written ordinance right now. And, and currently as it's written, it's allowed to have a home share in an R1 single family neighborhood. CCRs, HOA, doesn't really come into our purview. That is up to you guys to then go back and, and there is a, a vehicle you can use and go to district court to get stopped. But here, we, according to the ordinance, can approve a home share in a single family re residence. Can you repeat, you said I need to go to whom? Todd Stone is the, the council person for that okay. ward. And just what's your opinion there? on the ordinance change because again they're working on an ordinance change and, and it will change this um, and right now what we can do for you and, I, and and what we try to do i think as a board is to limit the number of people limit the number of cars limit the number of of influences that can be upon you as a resident so. okay sure. i mean i hate saying this to people but I've said many times, we don't have jurisdiction to enforce CCRs or HOA bylaws. There are other vehicles. Okay. Uh, and I don't have anybody else signed up to speak. Is there anybody that wants to address the board on this application? Okay, I'll let you respond then. I have kids of my own, right? So I know what they are coming from, but we are trying to make sure that it's we have when we give, we'll try to give to the like family, individual, not for a party goers or something. Where did you live? I, I missed that part. Your address. Do you live close to this property? Yes, sir. And you're managing this property yes, yourself. Yes, sir. I just live like five minutes away from this property. Okay. Yeah, sure, yeah. I live in so, Rivendell. Yeah, what I would like for you to do is, is at the end of this, give them your contact. The more inf communication you can have between the neighbors and you, the better this is going to go. Sure, yes, of course. So if you would, just allow the neighbors that are here to have your contact information. Sure. Okay. Um, I, I have a couple of questions because um, you have observed quiet hours between 10 o'clock p.m. through 6 o'clock a.m. Then underneath, you have outdoor quiet hours 9 o'clock p.m. through 7 o'clock a.m. That's two different time frames, but it basically covers the same amount of time. Okay. So if we can make those both the same? Yeah, just make an adjustment to the application and have quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. every day. Okay, sure, sir. And then also, I would like to ask you a question because you have no video production without prior consent. What kind of video production are you talking about? Video production? In your application, it says that you do not allow video production without prior consent. We don't know what that means. That's what we're asking. No. You do don't you know either. what that means? <laughs> you don't know what it means either? No. Oh, okay. So do you want to sh strike that? <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. We will. Yeah. So also you asked for the special exception indefinitely. And that's a good request, but we can't do it. <laughs> no. And is this the first time this application has come before us? Okay. And, and for the protection of your neighbors, the maximum I would give is a one-year exception. Sure, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to limit the number of cars okay. to four cars. Four cars can fit in that driveway and no on-street parking. Sure, sir. Okay. Anything else? And I know there's some other people in there. If you want to come up and speak, you can speak without signing up. Can we ask a quick question? You have to do it from, the, from here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Catherine Taufist. I live at 137 Southwest 132nd Street. Street is here, place is behind me. So I've lived there since, well, I've been in my house for 22 years. It's been quiet. I know all of my neighbors. We have a little bit of a problem. You see, we're the board members of the HOA and we're responsible for everybody else in that addition. 
And we just want to make sure that our neighborhood stays quiet. It's very quiet. That's why we moved there. And we just thought we could come here and get some kind of a resolution where all of our people in our HOA would be comfortable with this. We understand that not everybody's going to bring in sex offenders and stuff like that, but there are chances. And we are concerned about our children, and we're concerned about odd cars in our neighborhood. We watch. I know my neighbor's cars. I know if there's someone there that shouldn't be there, you know, because I've lived there for so long in my street. We just appreciate your time. Thank you for helping us and letting us know what we can and we can't do. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And just a little bit more on that. The self-policing that you guys do in your neighborhood, calling in code violations, that's the only way we get feedback. And so you have to do that for us to even know on the renewal what's going on. And we do that. So, well, you know, we yeah. will do that. And, that, and that'll will. also make the, the applicant a better uh, businessman and owner for this property, okay. knowing. Turner, and I live at 129 Southwest 133rd, and I'm vice president of the HOA. And yeah, this is a little upsetting because, you know, we just thought that our HOA was protecting us from this type of thing. We have, uh, we do have some complaints in our neighborhood about like a guy that works on his own cars, and he th we think maybe he brings in other cars and has a business, you know, kind of of repairing cars, and there's always cars there, but he, you know he moves them in time to where it's it's not been a problem. But just um, it makes makes me wonder about our HOA bylaws. I mean, uh, what else can we do besides so to yeah, protect yeah. ourselves? Yeah, I just want to address that. I don't I don't want you to misinterpret anything that we're saying. We're not saying that your bylaws are insufficient or that they don't apply. Uh, I, I've not read your bylaws, uh, and I'm certain that you probably have all of the protections that you were led to believe are there. Uh, our statement is simply that uh, we, we don't have the jurisdiction uh, to to take in that argument of whether or not it violates those those guidelines. That would be done through district court. So your HOA may decide to retain an attorney and outline all of the reasons that you feel like this home sharing uh, uh, activity would violate that HOA. And that attorney, he or she may very well say, yes, this is absolutely a violation. And they would file the appropriate action at district court. And just as, as we're here presiding over uh, the, the few things that are within our scope, uh, you would have a district judge that would preside over your, your case that actually could hear your arguments as to whether or not it violates the HOA bylaws. And that's why I also said to contact the council person, because as they've changed the ordinance, they could put the, the HOA and CCRs into the ordinance. Then we could follow them. Okay. It, it's just a possibility. Okay. Thank it's you. just a lack of jurisdiction. We can approve or deny a special exception, put some conditions on it, but we can't enforce your right. CCRs. And that's an ODEM development. So I didn't write those. I can tell without reading them, you've got good CCRs and a good homeowners association because right. it's an ODEM deal. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> I'm the secretary treasurer for our HOA. Being the owner of that property, and you've made some amendments, can he come to our HOA meetings so he'll know what's going on in our neighborhood? Yep. I mean, we only have them once a year, and we like our owners, not our renters, because we do have rental property, but we'd like to have our owners come. Can you? I can't make him, but, but can <laughs> communicate with him. But can you suggest that yeah. he come, and so he'll know what's going on in our neighborhood, so mm -hmm. he can comply with, like if we do, ch he has a voice, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Okay. And that's why I want that communication back and forth. Okay. Just so, so you guys know that. And, you know, we do have dues that have to mm -hmm. be paid, so yep. he'll be responsible for that. Okay. He's looking at the clock. Sorry. <laughs> and I've never, I just want to say, I have not seen him, met him until this very minute. So it's, it's not him. It's not anything against you whatsoever. It is just 
the whole sole purpose of what I'm talking about. I think they feel the exact same thing, way. So my question is, um, obviously, I, I guess if it gets approved before we are to go and talk to anyone else, um, let's just say he won't be there. Let's say somebody's in there for, I don't know, two weeks, okay? And there is an issue or there's a safety issue. Based on other properties that you've that have had this, where would you? Because I'm the type of person I like to talk to my neighbors. If there's a problem, I go. I'm like, hey, because I don't want to cause any more issues. But if I don't know these people and they're in there and something is to come up, what would you advise? Like, I would first call the owner, okay. and if I got nothing, I'd call Code Services. Okay. And with Oklahoma City. Okay. And then 911 after that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you very much. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So you, you yes, will sir. contact the or give your information out yes, to, to the people in the in the uh, in the audience today. Okay. Okay. I think we're ready for a motion. With that, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case number one five 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 four on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and the adjustments to be quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., maximum number of cars being four, no on-street parking, a one-year exception, and we are striking the no video protection production without prior consent from the application. I second. Do we have a motion and a second? Cast your votes. Thank you, You're sir. approved, and if you'd visit with those folks, we'd yes. appreciate that. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, prior, uh, before you start the next one, I'm gonna have to leave, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't wanna get in the midst of it and then get okay. So let me leave real quickly. All right. Item number 17, case number 15561 is an application for special exception of Merrick DuBose on the behalf of Three Geese LLC to allow home sharing at 6601 Northwest 113th Street. Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Mark Dobos and I'm trying to get the special exception on that house at 6601 uh, Northwest 113. This house belongs to my daughter and she used to rent it, but uh, she wants to try something else since there was too many damages from the tenants. So the house has been restored and we are trying to get an application to pursue with this. Okay. Okay, any questions or comments from the board? A um, couple of questions for you. Your daughter owns the property. Where does she live? She lives in Lost, in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma yes, City? Yes, by Memorial Road on Lost Creek Drive. Okay. That's just, just North. Is, is just the uh, LLC. Yeah, okay. Um, there's a swimming pool on property, right? There's what? A swimming pool? No. No swimming pool in the backyard? No. Oh, okay, sorry, I thought there was. Um, there's a couple of, of protests on this, or just maybe one written. Did anyone sign up to speak? Uh, yes, we've got two folks on this one. I haven't seen any. Have you seen the, pro the protest? No. Okay, we can get you a copy. And then I'd like to hear from the, the people signed up to speak. Yeah, there were protests in the packet, so. Um, okay. I've got Michael Kofelt. Kofelt? Did I say that right? Kofelt. Come on up, give us your name and address. And uh, My name's Michael Kohfeldt. I live at uh, 6617 Northwest 112th Street. So I'm about one block to the south of the subject I do, I saw a pool. house. And uh, well, first of all, just sitting here listening to the cases go by, and, and I saw how many home sharing that you are going through and after seeing these four ladies come up here and protest that you were going to approve a home share, it, it, it sounds to me like it's a foregone conclusion already. But I'm going to pass on the information 
that I found about this, just for your information anyway, if it, uh, I hope it does some good, but uh, uh, I've lived, <laughs> you're not hearing me okay? <laughs> it, uh, I, I've lived there for uh, 27 years. I know all my neighbors. My neighbor across the street is from Ghana. My neighbor to the west is from Taiwan. My neighbor across the street is the perfect uh, American dream story. He, he came here, he went to New York, and uh, he made, got citizenship in New York, moved out of New York like any smart person would, and uh, found a place here in Oklahoma. Uh, he's, uh, he, is, he travels a lot, and, but he's got a good business and he's doing great. Uh, my, the, my neighbor uh, from Taiwan uh, works for Goldman Sachs. He's not here on a visa, and I have no problem with those people living here, and anybody that comes here legally, I have perfect uh, uh, okay with them. Uh, I, I want them to come. My issue is, and I think this home sharing contributes to illegals coming into our country and establishing a residence and then voting in our elections. And the reason I feel this way is, well, you see it, if you listen to the news at all, you see it all over the country. And uh, it's a perfect setup for coming in, have staying 30 days or less, get a, a, a residence established, and then you, you're, you get an og and &E bill, or you get og and &E bill, or you get a city bill, and you can register to vote. And there's nothing we can do about it because we can't demand proof of citizenship. So they get citizenship, or they, they don't get citizenship, but they can enroll on our voter rolls and vote. They'll be illegal, they will get caught, but their vote will be cast, and we can't get it back. And District 5 is the most vulnerable district in Oklahoma to be flipped by the liberals. And I'm sure, and they're making every effort to probably try to do that. And what concerned me when I saw this, this home sharing coming up to my neighborhood was, first of all, I wasn't gonna do anything because the last thing I want is to be here. But I woke up at night and I could not go back to sleep because of what I was seeing. And you, the first thing I saw was the uh, list of sanctuary cities rolling through on Fox News. And lo and behold, there's Oklahoma County in sanctuary city. And I know we're not a sanctuary city or a county or anything, but it wasn't for us. It was for the illegals coming across the southern border. They're going to come here, they're going to establish residency, and the liberals are using it to uh, uh, flip the di District 5 blue. And I know that's a far-fetched story, but it, it all falls into place. Uh, and when I saw this uh, 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 Three Geese LLC, I, I talked to the gentleman about it, and he said that it belongs to his daughter. Well, there's an LLC in Arizona. There's an LLC, Three Goose LLC, or Geese LLC in Georgia. There's one in Nevada. There's one in Utah. And all of them are vulnerable to be flipped. They're swing states and, and our District 5 is vulnerable to be flipped. And all of these home shares, that's why I stood up I, when I saw how many home shares there were, all of them are vulnerable to that. And I'm not saying that he's bringing in uh, illegals to live in his, so they can go vote. But if he just brings somebody in, lets them stay there, uh, he pays them rent, and uh, uh, that they'll, they can get their own residence and they can show, 
here, this is where I live, and if they don't have to stay there, but they get elected, if they get uh, on the voter rolls, they can go anywhere. And they're there, and they have, if they vote in their district, they can vote, and they're not gonna get caught. And I know that because I was precinct you know, official in our precinct, and you can't do anything about it if they're, even if they're illegal, but when they run the barcodes through uh, on the voter rolls, they'll catch anybody that is voted that shouldn't have voted. And they'll get a list of people that voted from uh, 10 or 20 people that voted from one address. That's exactly what happened in Arizona in 2020. And that's my theory. Uh, you can laugh at it if you want, but the home sharing is an ideal situation for this, and uh, I think it should be considered when you approve these home sharings. And, uh, and how our uh, neighborhood is eligible for home sharing, I, I, don't, I, I mean, it's zoned for single family dwellings. So I feel it should be uh, single families that live there. I mean, I know it can be rented and uh, you can bring family people in and stay for a while and I, that's not an issue, but just renting to people you don't know and allowing them to stay there and they pay your rent. Now, I mean, it's like having a little motel in your neighborhood and that's just not right. And how that is being approved in our city, I just don't understand that. And that's all I got to say. Okay. Questions for? Just a couple of comments for you. The same thing that I, I told the other group. This is, this is in Ward 8. Uh, Mark Stone Cipher is the council person in Ward 8. And reach out to them. And because, again, they're working on an ordinance change. And that's where you'll get the changes to this existing ordinance. They're making an ordinance change for our neighborhood. Yeah. For the whole city. For home sharing. Who is? The council. Our city council. So reach out to them, give them your information. Do what you, you know think. why they're making that change? Do they want illegals to come in here, get registered, and vote? Are they Democrats? <laughs> well, I don't think party affiliation. <laughs> yeah, they're, has no, they're to not. Do with it. They actually want to tighten up the home sharing, okay? Uh, because there are so many. And like you said, I mean, you see what we get this every two weeks, we get a good group of home shares. And so, you're going to approve it? Not necessarily, no. Okay. They meet the ordinance. I'll vote yes. Right. Okay. So we we go to the city council and protest that we don't want home shares in our neighborhood. I, why should we have to do that? That is, we're it's, already it's owned. It's yeah. It, it's nationwide the business of home sharing. Nationwide. Uh huh. My point exactly. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, There's one Deborah. more. Hello, my name is Deborah Gudgel, and I live at 6600 Northwest 112. So I'm exactly one block south of where this residence is. Um, 112th and James L. Dennis, that's a very busy intersection. Um, when you go up to 117th, that's where James L. Dennis Elementary School is located. So this, this home is four blocks away from James L. Dennis Elementary School. It is a corner house too. And so there's children walking. I see, you know, middle schoolers. I see some of the older elementary schools. They're walking along James L. Dennis to go to their school. Um, where I live, it's on a corner house also. And the Hefner Middle School children are picked up at my address in the morning, seven something or whatever. And so there are uh, a lot of children that are present in this area and, you know, parents. Um, also, on 117th, if you make a left, that's where Putnam City North High School is. And so 
you know, there is a lot of traffic. My concern, this being a corner house, I think he did mention uh, no street parking should be allowed. And being a corner house, I would probably think no street parking should be allowed. Um, I, I did also notice that he was requesting for a number that there could be 10 people that could reside in this home. And he was also requesting a 10 year grant for, for this application, which uh, being a new application, I would hope it would possibly, I've never been to one of these hearings, I would hope that it would possibly be a one year application versus even three years because our neighborhood is a, you know, I've seen all these pictures of these houses. Our neighborhood is a lot higher end than these other properties. You know, they're valued from three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollar homes, and you know that your home is you know in that ballpark. And so, it's not that. Um, it's not that. Um, I'm just concerned about being okay. on hold that up, kind of... Hold up just a second. Yes. We lost a quorum. He'll be back. We lost a quorum. Okay. We, we have to have three. Otherwise, <laughs> we all wait. <laughs> well, I have grandkids, but they all live out of state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Marcus, be back in a minute. But I am a pharmacist, and my technician brings her two children to work with her every day. That is a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Are we leaving the door open? <laughs> Closed would be good. Okay, continue. Back on oh, the record, go ahead. Did Kitty leave or? Yeah, she, she had to go. She had, oh, yeah. she had to leave, okay. Um, let's see, so um, this, our subdivision, it's Warwick 5, it's a more exclusive subdivision than I guess all the properties that I've seen presented today. Um, I've never done home sharing. I've never been around home sharing. The home I live in was built in 1992. I've owned the house for 19 years. And so, um, you know, Mark lives down the street from me. And, you know, I, and I know all the people in the neighborhood. My concern is, like the lady in the house before, not knowing the people that are coming and going and coming and going as often as if someone's, you know, renting for a year or two versus, you know, someone that owns the home. So um, it being so close to a school, I'm a little really concerned with that because it is only four blocks away from James L. Dennis Elementary. Um, uh, my concern is also that possibly this would lower the property value if several of these type of, you know, situations are in the neighborhood. Um, and I would hope that would not be happening. Um, I know you've talked about quiet hours. I would hope that definitely should be enforced. And about a property manager, I know, um, I don't know if that's something a person can be suggesting this this area does have a homeowners association also so um, my just it's 
upsetting, you know, that this is happening or possibly happening. And so I just hope that you do consider the comments that I have made and uh, to limit the number of people that would be allowed. This home is a four bedroom home, so it's larger. It's 2,800 square feet. Mine's 2,800 square feet also. Um, so to have, you know, 10 different people, and I don't know on, on this type of home sharing, if like sometimes people just are having part of the house and another party has another part of the house at the same time, I don't know what is allowed in these situations. But uh, thank you for hearing my comments. I appreciate that. Questions for Deborah? The only thing I'd say to you is say what I said to the others, so self-policing this is, is your best avenue to keep this as reasonable as you can keep it. Who is our council member in Mark that? Stone Cipher. Stone Cipher. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and again, you call uh, codes, the code enforcement. If there's if you see anything wrong, and, and they will document it, and we'll we'll know in the future. Thank you. Okay. okay. You want to respond, please? Well, uh, this property has been a rental, and I don't see how, how the traffic is going to increase. And, you know, people which protest here, they say that they knew all the neighbors and everybody. But, uh, you know, they are about two blocks away, and it's not going to affect them. I have, be, I have some other uh, home sharings which I manage. And I think, personally, and I tried to explain it to them before, that being involved into this have given the people more control. I had, my daughter had the trees died out because the tenant did not water them. I definitely will spend the money for the water, for the upkeeping of the house. That's gonna look like, a, like it's supposed to. And that way, if somebody stays three days or four days, our minimum is three days, when they, when they leave, we address all the problems. We make sure that the grass is mowed, that everything is taken care of. So actually, if we're gonna meet, if I get approved and we're gonna meet for renewal in the future, they will be able to tell the difference. I put 10 years because I didn't know what to put. You know, there is no really any guidelines how many years you can you can apply for and you can get a spe special inspection uh, exception. And if the, the school the person was concerned about the school, doesn't matter who lives there, if there's gonna be a, be a tenant or somebody, everybody has to be careful. Recently, one of these high school students drove in through the fence over there. And it wasn't about the home sharing, it was about careless driving. You know, the, we replaced the fence right away. There was a pieces of car in my front yard. And, you know, I don't blame anybody. I just think that everybody has to be careful when they're driving and then, you know, cooperate as much as we can, you know, to make this neighborhood nice. So you manage the other four properties? I do, yeah. I do manage. And there is another property in this same neighborhood? Yes. Yeah. So a couple of, of things on the application I'd like to, to change. You, you do have four beds, but you have 10 guests. I'd like to limit it just to eight. We can, we have some extra extra beds, you know. But yeah, we just try to keep it right. two per bedroom. Uh, I'd like to keep or make quiet hours be 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. That's fine. I'd like to limit the maximum number of cars to six, which is still a lot of cars, but you can fit that many in the driveway. So I can, I have three car garage and, and a three car garage, driveway. right. And so no on street parking. No, I don't. And it's the first time this has come up. So a one year exception. That's fine. Okay. There were some written protests. Uh, yeah, I think there was three written protests you, and, and they were in the packet. So you should have those. I didn't get it. So, okay. But, uh, and, and you can, okay. you can contact them and directly. And I heard you say that there's a minimum of a three-day rental. Yes, we don't I mean, do. That's really good. I'm not going to. We gonna... don't do one day because that's that can indicate the party. 
So that's, that's you know, if somebody wants to come for three days, there, is, there are some people visiting families, there are some people going to the hospital because it's not, not very far, far away, and they, in the cer special circumstances, they could use it. So it has, it's, uh, home sharing has some good stuff too, mm -hmm. not, al not only bad. Right. And a good operation, a good manager can make this a very good property. And I'll be very happy and to And I, I went by it this morning, uh, the fence is back up, They're, the yard's mowed, I mean, it, it looks fine. Yeah, so, it will be that way or better. So as long as you keep it up, I think I you'll will. you keep your neighbors somewhat happy. All right, those are the only folks that signed up to speak. So anybody wants to address the board on this application? And just for me, make sure that they have your contact information. Of course, of course. Okay. I, there's nothing else from the board. We're ready for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15561 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and the addition of an eight guest maximum, quiet hours from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., a maximum number of cars six, no on-street parking, and for a term of one year. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Okay, so need the next one. Oh. Item number 18. We're done. Case number 15563 is an application for special exception of Darren Baroni and Elizabeth Burbano to allow home sharing located at 1524 North Kentucky Avenue. Hello. Uh, Brennan Caffrey and my wife, Narisa Caffrey, representing Elizabeth Burbano and Darren Baroni. They are my in-laws. Uh, we live at 4545 North Lincoln Boulevard, Unit 1016, uh, applying for a exemption for home sharing. Uh, the property is 1524 North Kentucky Avenue. It's a new build as of 2023. Um, oh, man, the garage is full. Um, we uh, are going to be actively managing it. They live in Virginia. Uh, it's a three bedroom home, a two and a half bath. Uh, we've got a queen, a king, and then two twin mattresses in the third bedroom. And, and a pull out queen as a uh, sofa bed couch. So it's a three bedroom. Yes, How many sir. baths? Two and a half. Okay. Um, I'd still like to limit it to six, first time. Uh, quiet hours, 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. It says after 10 p.m. I just want to put the 8 a.m. to it. And then I want to limit the number of cars. The driveway situation is kind of a little bit different. So could you help me? Can you fit two cars in the drive? No. It's one car in the drive. One car in the garage, one car, one car in the, the drive. And then I'll allow one more in the street. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And then a one-year exception. Nobody signed up to speak on this one. And I'll bet the folks in the back aren't on this one. So. <laughs> they might want to talk. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I think we're ready for a motion. With that, I'd like to make a motion to approve case number 15563 on the basis that it meets the statutory requirement for a special exception with the self-imposed rules and adjustments to them at a maximum of six guests, quiet hours from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., a three car max with one car parked in the street and for a term of one year. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Cast your votes. You're approved. Awesome. May I ask two questions? Um, we have a neighbor across the street from us who parks several cars on the street. Um, is that something that we can address? for the safety of the neighborhood and the street, as well as our clientele. If they're parked legally, I mean, you can call code enforcement, but if they're parked legally or something, okay. you can do. Great, and then I heard something about a 10-day waiting period. Our plan is to list this on Airbnb and VRBO. Is that something we can do now, or do we need to wait 10 days? There's a 10-day appeal time. Yeah, okay. And you have to obtain your license. Yeah. Okay. And so we have to wait for that 10 days. 
guys know. Thank you very much. You can, Thank you. I had, sorry, I had one other question about the six guests. So in a year when we come back to renew. If, if you don't have any, any protests or anything, okay. you can move it up. Great, great. Thank you so much. Cool. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. Okay. Cindy, I don't have any additional items. No board committees. Anybody have comments? Your turn. No, sir. Citizens to be heard. I'll listen to that. Uh, no other business, we're adjourned.